Hello and welcome back to another episode from your cyber babysitter, Crayola Coaster. Today we'll be reading from Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Lost Christmas, a sequel to How the Grinch Stole Christmas. If you have a copy, feel free to pull your copy out and read along. Up high on Mount Crumpet, just north of the Who's, a Who just delivered the day's Whoville news. The cave on Mount Crumpet was home to the Grinch, who sprung from his cave just enough plus one inch to stare down at Whoville from high up above it. Tomorrow was Christmas, and speaking there of it, my heart grinned the Grinch, has grown to quite love it. The Grinch had been patiently waiting all year to celebrate Christmas and bring the Who's cheer, and to show every Who he was different now. I've changed, thought the Grinch, and I'll prove it, but how? While eating his breakfast of Who hash on rye, the newspaper there in the chair caught his eye. A contest in Whoville, tomorrow at three, to see who can make the most Christmassy tree. Then he got an idea, a crafty idea. The Grinch got an awfully crafty idea. He laughed in his throat, I know just what to do. Then the Grinch grabbed a pencil and drew, 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 drew. With the plan in his hand, the Grinch hiked to who would, where he found the most Christmassy tree that he could. And he chopped at the tree with his tree chopping axe, till the tree he was chopping fell down next to Max. Then they hiked their way home with the tree on their back. Out Sailor has all of the things we will use to start decorating our tree for the Who's. Grab ribbons, he shouted. Grab bunches of bows. Grab plenty of these and a pig pile of those. Bring everything reddish and everything greenish and every last colorful thing in betweenish. I'll win, win, win. He was Grinchisly humming, then all of a sudden he heard someone coming. Now who could that be? The Grinch said with a sneer. He turned around fast, and then who should be? Right there in the hallway stood Cindy Lou. Who? The sweetest of all the who's that he knew. Hello, she exclaimed. I have something to ask. I do hope it isn't a bothersome task. I've come here to ask a small favor, you see. And if you have time and could make one for me. The Grinch interrupted her tiny request. My dear, he replied, it would really be best to ask me tomorrow on Christmas, you see. Right now I must finish my prize winning tree. Perhaps I can help you, sweet Cindy Lou said. But the Grinch simply patted the who on her head. Then he shooed her outside and replied, don't be silly. Do run along home now before it gets chilly. Throughout the whole day and later to the night, he worked on that tree till that tree was just right. I've done it, he shouted. It's perfectly grand. I hope that it shows every who in the land. What wonderful Christmassy spirit I found. I know in my heart that I'm sure to be crowned. At a quarter past dawn, with the sun rising fast, the who's were awake. It was Christmas at last. The bells around Whoville were ringing and dinging. The Who's down in Whoville were merrily singing. The Grinch ran outside and cried, Christmas is here, at the sound of that ringing and sing-along cheer. And when the time came for the Grinch to depart, he loaded the sleigh and took off like a dot, sledding down, 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 to the Whoville town square. Contestants, the Grinch heard the mayor declare, it's time for the judges to judge all of your trees. The rest of you who's have a seat if you please. Then the trees were lined up from the tallest to smallest. The Grinch tall tree was the tallest of allest. And down at the end to the far, far right was Cindy Lou who's with its much smaller height. When the mayor announced who had taken third place, the Grinch felt his Christmas-filled heart start to race. 
And now the mayor said, without further ado, the lucky contestant who placed number two lives high on Mount Crumpet. We're thrilled that he's here. The Grinch wins the second place trophy this year. The Grinch felt the shock at his heart turned ice cold. He felt it start shrinking and so it is told that there in the square all the who's were near it are certain they saw it and sure they could hear it. The moment the Grinch lost his Christmassy spirit, his arms started itching, his legs started twitching, then both his eyes started twitching and itching, and that Christmas filled heart, well it shrank, shrank, shrunk down. I've been robbed, the Grinch snarled, and I'm through with this town. The Grinch stuffed his tree in his ramshackle sleigh. Then he lunged it and tugged it and hauled it away. As Max tried his hardest to get him to stay, the hoods were all speechless, unsure what to say. The Grinch climbed and climbed as his heart grew more frozen. While back at the contest, a winner was chosen. Today, on the merriest day in the land, the mayor declared with his who horn in hand, I give you our winner. She's not more than three. It's Cindy Lou who, who has made the best tree. The Who girl had asked every Who there that day to make her ornament she could display. To celebrate Whoville and everyone in it, she'd entered the contest not thinking she'd win it. The Grinch heard the mayor from high on the peak, the Cindy Lou who grabbed the Who horn to speak. I wanted to make all of Whoville a tree with ornaments each of you who's made for me. But there is one ornament missing, you see. The whole town of Whoville was there on each limb, except for the Grinch. So she called out to him, Now please, Mr. Grinch, I saved you a spot. You're someone who hooves like an awful lot. This tree is for Whoville. You're part of it, too. I hope you can hear me, said Cindy Lou Who. Cindy Lou's voice stopped the Grinch in his tracks. He looked down at Whoville, then looked down at Max. I thought, the Grinch puzzled, a prize-winning tree would prove to the Who's what today means to me, and show them for certain I truly belong, but perhaps I was wrong, and belonged all along, and maybe, just maybe, we all win and stand, by being together at Christmas, he sang. But there on Mount Crumpet, if you had been near it, you would have been able to see it and hear it. The moment his heart grew a few sides more, to more than his heart had grown ever before. At what happened then, well, in Whoville they say, that the Grinch and his dog wheezed back down on that sleigh. And the Grinch placed his ornament on the small tree, then he lifted it high so the whole town could see. The Who's all hooray, and they jumped to their feet as the Grinch grinned and said, now our tree is complete. Then the mayor declared, we have one thing to do, to make it official for Cindy Lou Who. Would you do the honors, he pointed and said, and the Grinch, he himself, placed the crown on her head. The end. And thank you again for joining and reading along. Until next episode, I'll see you then. Bye.